Welcome back. The details. President Abdel Fattah Sisi received on Saturday his Serbian counterpart Alexander Vucic at Al Ittihadiyya Palace. Upon the guest's arrival, the two leaders reviewed the Guard of Honor as the national anthems of both countries were played. President Sisi and his Serbian counterpart held extensive talks tackling regional and international files where consensus was illustrated in a number of issues of common concern. Moreover, both leaders underscored the deeply rooted relations between Egypt and Serbia, emphasizing the need to strengthen the mechanisms of bilateral cooperation in all domains. Following the talks, the two presidents held a joint press conference where President Sisi said the Egyptian-Serbian bilateral relations witnessed a quantum leap which led to increase the volume of political coordination, economic and cultural collaboration. We have more details in the coming report. President Abdel Fattah Sisi stressed that talks with visiting Serbian counterpart Alexander Vucic showed the two sides keenness to continue what they started after his visit to Belgrade as it marked a leap in political, economic, military and cultural relations. The president's remark came in a joint press conference with his Serbian counterpart following their talks. President Sisi highlighted that they also agreed on boosting ties in all fields via activating all memorandum of understanding which were signed during the visit, especially the free trade deal, which is due to raise the rate of bilateral economic exchange. The head of the state also asserted the importance of holding periodic meetings to tackle bilateral cooperation mechanisms and the joint Egyptian-Serbian Committee for Economic and Scientific Cooperation. On the international level, the summit discussed a number of regional and international files stopping the list of the Ukrainian crisis, as both sides agreed on the necessity of achieving peace in the near future. President El Sisi and Vucic also renewed the Egyptian stance regarding the Palestinian file, expressing full rejection to the liquidation of the Palestinian cause, the displacement of the Palestinian people, and uh, he repeated the call for implementing an immediate ceasefire in the Palestinian occupied territories. For his part, the Serbian president hailed the Egyptian political leadership vision in dealing with the surrounding challenges and hailed the Egyptian pivotal regional role. Vucic invited President Sisi to visit Belgrade and vowed to resume consultations with Cairo on different files of mutual interest. The special committee formed to study the government's program continued its meetings on Saturday to listen to ministers of labor, education, higher education, social solidarity, health, housing, youth and sports. First Deputy of the Parliament, Councillor Ahmed Saadeddin, stressed the importance of discussions that took place between members of Parliament and concerned ministers during the meetings, referring to the matching of visions from both sides, which underscores the complete keenness on developing all of the state sectors. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Abdurrahman al-Assoumi, said the international deliberate and shameful stance towards the Palestinian cause necessitates a reconsideration of international rules. Al-Assoumi's remarks came while addressing the fifth plenary session of the third legislative term of the Arab Parliament on Saturday at the Parliament's headquarters in Cairo. Details follow. The fifth plenary session of the fourth session of the third legislative term of the Arab Parliament kicked off on Saturday at the Parliament's headquarters in Cairo, headed by Speaker Aydel al Asumi. Arab Parliament discussed a number of Arab regional and international files in addition to the latest developments in the Palestinian cause, situation in the Gaza Strip and the occupied Palestinian territories. Addressing the session, Lasumi stated the shameful situation and crimes, as well as massacres committed by the occupation forces against the Palestinian people, which are necessitating a reconsideration of international rules. Considering the Libyan file, the Arab Parliament Speaker reiterated the Parliament's support for holding a presidential and parliamentary election in Libya, stressing that this would enhance peace and security in the region. Referring to the Yemeni issue, Asumi called on the intensifying of Arab efforts to reach a sustainable and comprehensive solution to the crisis, adding this paves the way to end the humanitarian suffering of the Yemeni people. He also expressed the Arab Parliament's relentless efforts that aim to maintain the unity and sovereignty of Yemen. For their part, members of the Arab Parliament expressed their support for the Palestinian people, stating that the Palestinian cause was and will remain the central issue of Arabs, 
to which the Arab Parliament pays special attention. Egypt condemned in the strongest terms. On Saturday, the Israeli brutal airstrikes in El Mawasi near the city of Khan Yunis, where dozens of Palestinians, Palestinian civilians fell martyrs and injured. Egypt's foreign ministry, in a statement, called on Israel to stop targeting civilians and commit with the standards of humanitarian laws. The foreign ministry statement stressed those crimes will not fall by time and cannot be accepted. It added that these violations against Palestinians are endangering the current efforts to reach a ceasefire. On the ground, Gaza Health Ministry said dozens were martyred in an Israeli attack on a displacement camp. The Israeli Occupation Army said it struck Muhammad Dif and Rafa Salama, the commander of Hamas Khan Yunus Brigades. We have more details. The ministry in Gaza Strip said an Israeli strike on Saturday killed 71 people at the Al Mawasi camp for war displaced in the south of the Palestinian territory. Al Mawasi, near the city of Khan Yunis, was designated as one of the safe zones by Israel after it ordered civilians to evacuate other parts of the Gaza Strip. The ministry condemned the brutal massacre by the Israeli occupation, saying that 71 people were martyred and at least 281 wounded, with additional victims yet to be found. The Israeli the occupation army said it was looking into the reported bombing. Fleets of ambulances rushed casualties to the Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunis. According to the Kuwaiti Field Hospital, also, they received a number of casualties. Gaza Civil Defense Agency said ongoing shelling had prevented its teams from reaching victims in the tenth city, where tens of thousands have sought refuge. Al Mawasi had been declared a safe zone by Israel as it pursues its genocide war in other parts of the Gaza Strip. The UN the Palestinian Relief Agency on Ra has estimated that up to 1.5 million people may now be in the whole Al Mawasi district. Suhai Belhams, head of the Kuwait Field Hospital, called the attack a real massacre. He said that there were many severe injuries, including uh, amputations and uh, lacerations of internal organs. Israeli Occupation Army has killed at least 38,345 people in Gaza, mostly civilians, according to data from Gaza Health Ministry.